Welcome to another IMCO with me, Jonathan Chan. Pardon. Thank you for joining me today for lunch as we talk about what topped the news this past week. So, what topped the news this past week that is worthy enough for me to offer my Christian opinion on? Well, it's the idea of FOMO. That's right, that acronym FOMO. If you don't know what FOMO means, it means the fear of missing out. Fear of missing out. And so the topic uh, of the story was about FOMO. And I included the article on the link below in the description of this video so that you can you. Go to it and read the article. Basically, the article by CTV said that uh, many young career professionals, smart ones, are experiencing the, uh, the FOMO. And because they're so FOMO'd that they have convinced themselves to trust financial advice off of social media threads social media posts. So whatever the investment decisions or making l borrowing decisions, uh, they would rather go to social media as opposed to consulting with a financial advisor, a reputable financial advisor, one that is has experience and most importantly, credentials to provide good sound financial advice. Instead, because of FOMO, they would rather have a quick advice from social media, whether it be through their friends, uh, their colleagues, or just a post that had a lot of hits or likes. So they would believe that. So what causes this FOMO? Or not even just a cause, how should a Christian approach FOMO? What's our Christian approach? What's our Christian opinion? Well, what's most importantly, actually, uh, not your opinion, my opinion, <laughs> just kidding. What's my Christian opinion that I can offer you on FOMO? Well, let's, go, let's take a, do the three takeaways quickly. Well, we have to dissect this whole FOMO thing. Uh, if FOMO is the acronym of fear of missing out, then uh, we should break it apart and deal with each acronym. So, First off, why do we FOMO? In other words, why do we feel like we're missing out? Because that's the first thing in any religion is to address the question of why. And so, because Christianity is a religion, we too have to explore the reason why we have the fear of missing out. And I don't know about you, but there are moments personally where I have, find myself FOMO. Why is that? It's because I have this fear of not experiencing the regret that I experienced before. So the, uh, the three pillars of regret, would've, should've, and could've. Uh, I'm sure you uh, have uh, experienced that too and said it many times to, your, to yourself as, you're, as we're talking to ourselves that, man, I should have done this or I could have done this or I would have done this and things would have been different. I should have married this guy instead of this guy or I should have chose this, these courses or this major as opposed to this major when I was in school or I should have studied harder or I should have played baseball or basketball and not play piano. That would have been more worthwhile. You know, regret. And I think, for me anyway, that I have this fear of experiencing that regret again. And so it kind of plays itself out when it comes to me interacting with my daughter. Because I want her to experience the things that I didn't experience or to take advantage of the things that I never took advantage of or could have took advantage of but didn't. And so I had to, so I'm telling her, 
you know what? You got to do this. You got to do this. You got to work hard and you got to study hard because, you know, I missed out on that FOMO, basically. And so I don't want her to experience that regret. And so I impressed it wrongfully onto my daughter. So that's one reason of why we FOMO. The other reason is maybe the fear of uh, that we convince ourselves that this is the norm. This is what's normal. Now, that's open to interpretation. And uh, I don't know what's your normal because your normal is probably different from my normal. But we all have a definition that we are convinced of that what accounts as normal. And uh, I think, well, from personally for myself, is that why I FOMO is because I'm not meeting to the standards of normality. I don't talk, I'm not talking about hang on, having a million dollar house. Actually, that's normal now. Uh, I'm not talking about a $10 million house. I'm not talking about, you know, lim- uh, unlimited passive income. I'm just talking about normality, like basic necessities or what I define, what I have come to convinced to myself as being normal. And so if I'm not meeting those standards, I have this FOMO. I feel FOMO'd that I fear that I am missing out on being normal. Another example is uh, I have many friends who cannot have children. And unfortunately, society has not moved past it yet that families may not need children to qualify as families. Uh, People who are in a a couple in a um, committed relationship can also be called families. Unfortunately, society, I don't think society, maybe I'm correct me if I'm wrong, has not moved past that. And so what's normal for us is to have children and to have a home to house the children and to have a fence that surrounds the house and have children and maybe later on have a dog and a cat. That's what's normal. And uh, so we fear of that as well. And so what is normal uh, to us and when we convince ourselves of what's normal, we fear of not hitting those standards. Uh, Maybe uh, not hitting the standards before we reach a biological age clock limit or whatever. And so that maybe that's why we feel FOMO. That's why I feel FOMO is because I just can't meet those standards of normality that I've convinced myself to believe in. All right. Number two, what's to fear then? Because uh, the reason why I'm asking this question is uh, for the Christians out there. Now, uh, if you're a Christian like myself uh, and we go to church, and we sing a lot of songs about not fearing. You know, it, it, fear may not be overt. The word fear may not be over, overt in those songs. Now, like, but, you know, some phrases like, I trust in God wholeheartedly, or I wholly trust in you, or my life is in your hands, or even just be overt. Like, there's a Chris Tomlin song, say, whom shall I fear? Quoting a passage in Romans. So if that's the case then, what is to fear? Uh, if we are uh, Christian and we claim that we're, we have no fear, why do we FOMO then? Uh, is it, again, is it about uh, not meeting the standards of normality that we have convinced ourselves to believe in? Or is it about the fear of regret, of experiencing regret again, of the things that we missed out on before, that there were some choices that we should have made? We shouldn't fear those things, right? Because we're Christian, we shouldn't be fearing. But is that, but is that the reason? Is that a, uh, is that a good reason um, to address FOMO? Like it's just to you know sing these songs constantly and frequently uh, so that uh, we might break out of that FOMO. No, because uh, if you're like me, who's been born and raised as a Christian, and uh, what is it now? I'm 43. Yes, newsflash, I'm 43. I've sung these songs long enough and I still FOMO. So why do I FOMO? So I go, what is there to fear? I'll tell you this. Uh, It's the whole thing about missing out. Uh, Missing out on normality. Uh, That's point number three, by the way. Uh, Missing out on normality. Missing out on uh, things that we could have not missed out. And missed opportunities. We don't feel full. I think that's what I mean, is that we don't feel full. 
Uh, we could sing until the cows come home of the uh, truths in those songs. Uh, mind you, they, there are the truths in those songs that we shouldn't fear. We could sing those songs and try to convince ourselves of these things, but singing and reciting, and no matter how many times we recite, no matter how many times we sing the truths, if we don't feel full, it's just words. And we will always have FOMO creeping in our lives and fearing of missing out. So how do we address this as a Christian? What's my Christian opinion that I can offer to you today? Well, there's a verse in the Bible. Yes, I'm going to use the uh, verse in the Bible because uh, apparently uh, from all the uh, uh, feedback that I, respond, uh, that I received, it is good to have uh, some scripture when I'm offering a Christian opinion. And so I will for your listening or vi uh, visual enjoyment. So I found, uh, so here's one that I found that is relevant for all of us today. And it's found in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. And I'm going to use the New Living Translation because apparently that's what we do. We always try to tell everyone what our version is that we're using. So if you don't like this version, tough beans. Uh, go in the, and look it up yourself in your version that you like. So it goes like this, verse 18. Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for the fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. This verse is basically in the context of, ex of defining what true love is. True love is to experience uh, the sacrificial love that Jesus gave to us. Uh, what he's, what John is saying about perfect love is that Jesus sacrificed himself for us so that we can live full, so that we can have full lives, that we do not lack anything because Jesus died for us. His sacrifice was perfect and therefore provided us with fullness, with the access to fullness, to be able to live a full life. And so... John is saying, if you have truly experienced and if you truly appreciate it and acknowledge and believe that Jesus died for Christian, for you and I, then we should be full. We should have full lives. We have victory over death. We shouldn't fear death. That's what it means by fear of punishment is that is the punishment of sin, which is death. So we shouldn't fear death. We shouldn't be fearing dying. In fact, dying is just the beginning of eternal life. That's when we resurrect because you can't resurrect when you don't die. So you have to die in order to resurrect. That's beyond the point. But if we fully acknowledge and appreciate Jesus' sacrifice of what he did on the cross and what he did when he rose from the dead, and which gave us access to full life, then there is no fear of missing out on not being full because we are full in Christ and that our lives right now is to live in light of that truth that we are full. So regardless of how many times we sing these songs or recite verses, if we do not believe, as John says, if we do not believe that Jesus has died for us and if we do not appreciate, acknowledge, and actually take it to heart of what he has done for us, and experience that fullness that he has given us, then we will always, always be tempted or just fall like subconsciously or unintentionally to FOMO. It's because we cannot convince ourselves that we are full in Christ. And so my Christian opinion to conclude again is the reason why Christians FOMO is because quite possibly we may not be a Christian. We may be still in a journey where we're discovering and, and uh, finding out whether Jesus' sacrifice uh, on the cross and his resurrection is actually true for us and that we experience fullness in him. Because really, it's an, I have convinced myself that Christianity is an experiential thing. It's a lifelong journey of experiencing this fullness. Well, you may not be full now, but you have experienced some glimpses of it. Uh, and we, we will continue to experience glimpses of it, but we gotta believe that these glimpses are things that we have, 
that thing, the, the fullness that we already have, that it's just breaking in, that it's just coming out, it's materializing for us, but we already have it, that we are full in Christ and that there is no reason for us to FOMO. That's it from me. Uh, thank you for joining me in another episode of IMCO. I appreciate you joining me today as we embark on FOMO. Till next week, have a blessed week.